Quick note before we start the show, the Fantasy Heroes game that you guys have heard us do, where we do fantasy, kind of fantasy football, but for Marvel Cinematic Universe characters to see how they do. The 2024 game is open now. We didn't get a chance to announce it last year before it started, so I wanted to let you guys know. We're going to try to do our draft episode in the next few weeks, but if we don't, just know the Fantasy Heroes is open. You go to fantasyheroesgame.com. That's fantasyheroesgame.com. I'll try to put a link in the show notes. You can either join with a team of people you want to play with, or you can get assigned a team, and all the rules and everything are over there. So go to fantasyheroesgame.com if you want to play this year and be a part of the fun. Uh, And on with the show. Today in the Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast, it's an exciting day. It's the first day we get to hear about your reactions to the first episode of Loki. This is one of my favorite things to talk about, so let's do it. All that right after this. Welcome to the Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast. My name is Matthew Carroll. And I'm Ashley Coffin. Ashley Coffin. This is one of my favorite types of episodes because when we have a new show out, and we get other people's things that they're writing in and hear what they're saying. And like, they just inspire so much like creativity and interest to me. I just love hearing other people's thoughts on like things I would never would have noticed or never would thought about. This one, I feel like it's fun because you guys are on my level for the first time. Like you didn't get to watch the episode twice before. And it's funny to see other people like saw things that I'm like, oh, I wanted to talk about that. And I wanted to Mm -hmm. talk about that. But the just chaos of jumping on, especially for the premiere of a new episode. And we're all just 10 year olds like, (laughs) well, yeah, that's why that's why I love these because I'm like, God, I wanted to talk about that. Thanks for remembering. (laughs) Yeah. And I, I, I normally don't like taking notes on my first watch of a thing. So that's what we did a lot of those instant reactions. But now that it's coming out in prime time, I'm like, I want to have a thoughtful episode since we're doing our full review episode the first night. So I have been taking notes, but I kind of, I, I like to not do notes because I like to just enjoy it the first time. But I just tried to take some very minimal notes this time. Yeah, I've always had to do it. And my notes look are like chaos. It's always like three or four words. So, so I like remember I'm like, chicken car died. <laughs> you know, like because <laughs> I'm on my phone trying to type, you do it with my notes. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't love it, but. It is all fun in its own way. Yeah, yeah. No, it is for sure. All right. Well, we've got a bunch of feedback. So you want to just dive in and talk about everybody, what everybody's Let's saying? Let's jump in. Let Patreon first, as always. Of course, the Patreon first, which, by the way, patreon.com slash mcucast. If you enjoy this show, um, throw us a few bucks a month. It really, really helps out. Um, uh, we, we, we did our Patreon hangout on Sunday mm. and they were talking to us uh, and, I, and they were asking about how the finances work. And I was telling them like the ad finances of the show are all over the place, but the Patreon is like really where we get like consistent support. Like we do ads here and it does help, but like the Patreon is where we have consistent support. And so thank you so much for all the Patreon yeah, people. Sure. And if you, you know, there has been widespread issues with uh, Spotify and our podcast and other podcasts, which we uh, we all know mm-hmm. about, um, you know, thanks for everyone who wrote in. But you know where you never have a problem getting the podcast? Patreon. Patreon. <laughs> and it's and it's ad free. Ad free, baby. And sometimes early if it's a if it's a episode we have time we were able to do that. And we do a raffle uh, once a month to send send something out to somebody, or sometimes it's a guest spot on the podcast, stuff like that. So it's, it's cool stuff. Anyway, so if you get a chance to go over there and check it out, check out the the, the levels, and if you're interested, but. One of the things we always do is give patrons priority on our feedback episodes. So let's do it. First up, we have Earth to Chris. One of our patrons says, <laughs> when Mobius, I read this, I started reading this and I saw Mobius and I read it as Morbius. And I was like, this is not a Loki feedback. What is this about? <laughs> <laughs> this is the Jared Leto feedback. <laughs> it's Morbin time. <laughs> Morbin when that took time. over the whole internet. <laughs> that is still one of the funniest things that like Sony re-released it thinking they were, they were trending. It's, I mean, like, I feel like if they'd really turned into it, maybe, like, if they'd done an It's Morbin Time trailer or something like that, like, they maybe could have capitalized, but they weren't willing to, like, fully lean into the It's Morbin Time thing. No. Like, like, if they'd had, like, encouraged cosplayers that, like, were half-dressed as 
Power Rangers and half dressed as Morbius or something. I don't know. Like it could have been, it could have been the first Barbenheimer situation, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay. We've made it two words into this. Okay. Here. Sorry. Earth to Chris says, uh, when Mobius breaks a piece of the device off in the hall, I think it was an improv line when Owen Wilson broke the prop. Uh, just a theory, but it seemed like that kind of a line. Uh, the phone call, uh, the phone should be answered by a very dark, evil version of Loki. Hmm. Ooh. The phone should be answered? He says answered by, I think he means the person on the other line should be an evil version of Loki. Well, we've already talked about it. It's very likely that the person who pruned him was him. Could be another version of Loki, not necessarily yeah. an evil version. But yeah, what if he does prune himself and then he steps forward? It's the Loki we know. He's just been through the whole season. I feel like the fact that they call that Obi or Oro, Ouroboros is a clue that not only maybe his character is a character that's going to have a grandfather paradox, but maybe this entire season is an Ouroboros. Like it's oh, yeah. the entire and, – and we saw it. We saw him getting pruned and what if he comes back and that's the end of the thing. But this is a really good point. Like what if – then on that phone is another version of that where another future version of Loki or evil version of Loki is is talking to this middle version of Loki and the thing just keeps eating its own tail over and over. <laughs> what do they have to say to each other at this point? Like, don't do it or do it or Sylvie was obviously involved. I don't know. I'm very excited to see where else all this is going to go. It's kind of like impossible <laughs> to, to, for me to yeah. wrap my mind around. I'm like, but why? I'm like, just stay in lane. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking about like what's going to happen with, um, you know, he who remains and Kang and like all of that stuff. And I think that's going to be the focus of this season. But a, a big feature last season was the multiple Lokis. I mean, clearly, of course, Sylvie mm -hmm. and Loki. But then that last third, second and third to last episode were filled with Lokis. You know, when he got pruned and we thought he was done for a second, they did. They just have done the right thing with the show, man. When they pruned him and then. They didn't wait till the next episode. Like, as if they'd waited until the next episode, it would have felt cheap, you know? Yeah, it would have been. But, meant. like, they, they, they immediately showed us in the post-credits, like, all these Lokis and Alligator Loki. I just, like, the, the, the joy in my heart when I saw Alligator Loki for the first time. <laughs> love it. I love it so much. You know me. I don't really like children, but, God, I liked that little boy Loki. He's like, I killed Thor. That's what got me yeah. kicked off the time timeline. I was like, okay, do you want to be my son? <laughs> <laughs> I'll adopt you. Darkest timeline baby Loki. It's real weird. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> killed <Thor. laughs> It just, for those of you, oh, well, nobody, nobody's seen video of this episode. So you, you did the uh, roadie uh, choking <laughs> Thanos motion. <laughs> One of my favorite lines. I was like, that's right. Philly represent. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I like the idea that Mobius, uh, that Owen Wilson was improving that moment when he broke broke the thing in the hallway. But I have to go back and rewatch it. I haven't seen. I, I did watch for that, I guess. So I can't. I can't. I can't like say that I noticed. I'd like to see an evil, dark, serious Loki because even like the Lokis that we've seen haven't been particularly, you know, evil. Evil. It's a really good point. Like we've seen, we've never seen a truly evil Loki. Um, all of the Lokis we've seen have been sort of this misunderstood, whatever. But like, what if we saw a Loki that never had that sort of redemption arc that we see, and like his choices keep leading him down darker and darker paths, mm -hmm. and we do see like just seeing Tom Hiddleston play. Like the closest I feel like we've seen is like Loki Avengers. and Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. Even the Loki, like the King of the Bowling Alley or whatever that was, like he was yeah. just a jerk. He wasn't like evil evil and then they all just started killing each other but i'm talking like evil let's do yeah it. yeah those were just like competitive lokis those weren't really evil um yeah but i'd love to see a loki that like maybe now that we've got this loki that ha cares about something i mean he always cared about his brother and he always cared about asgard in some yeah. ways and his mom and his mom. mommy's boy <laughs> but uh he, I, now that he's got sylvie to care about like what if there's what if there are two versions of the timeline within the TVA somehow? Like this this story we're seeing in the TVA, what if there's a version of him that loses Sylvie or something and like mm. really has to has to turn dark and try to, you know, capture the timeline and he's like a servant, more of a servant of Kang or or sort of like trying to take, you know, at the end of um season 1, he refuses to take the throne 
And it's such a great moment because that's mm-hmm. that's been his desire for everything. And he's offered the ultimate throne and refuses it, you know? I know. I was so disappointed. I was like, no, you could do some good. <laughs> you know what? No, wait. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I, I said that. He doesn't refuse the throne. She refuses the throne. They both kind of do. I don't think he was going to take it. Oh, or, no. Or, he... Oh, he was going to, but I think they would have been really good. I honestly thought that would have been a good thing for him. Like, okay, you need to be a king. Here's something you can be a king of where you're not going to be an absolute disaster. Yeah, maybe. But I mean, like, that power corrupting. I That was what was so interesting about that that like whole scene. And it's it's been a while since I've rewatched that. She's like, I knew you would do this. And he's like, yeah, I'm you. <laughs> we believe him. But yeah. she doesn't. She, yeah. We believe him that he's like, no, I think we should do this because it's the right thing to do. But he's always believed that he's the right thing for ruling everyone, you know? Mm-hmm. He wants to rule Earth because, like, he thinks it's the right thing. He's like, yeah, I'd be a better king than Thor. I'd be a better king than your rulers. Was it Miss Minutes who offered him? They're like, how would you like to go back and stop those pesky Avengers? And you could have won. Like they did give them some oh, options, yeah. and they, they were give like, them options before they <clears> meet <throat> He Who Remains. They give them the option of going back to like stay before you before you even go in. You have the option to just return to the timeline and like be the king of the mountain or whatever. Yeah, uh, and ha- and you could t- return you both to the same timeline and stuff like that. But then like He Who Remains offers them the role of like sitting in the citadel and ruling over time, which is like a yeah. whole other level. Um, yeah. It's really, but why? That's such a good. I, I'm, I'm gonna sit here and analyze the last episode of season one, but if you don't, if you'll let me. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> no, it's the you need to stop me. Oh, um, see, I'm <laughs> such a yes man. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll run time. I'll do whatever you want to do. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but the uh, the idea of the for last episode, like, why? If Miss Minutes is on his side and he who remains his side, why did she? offer Loki a chance to leave completely rather than why wasn't it all leading? And because he remains says in that moment, like it was all leading to this moment, you know, yeah. like, it was all reading. I was leading you here. I, I paved the road for you to be right here. Then why is Miss Mitz doing that? Messing with them. Yeah. It's the apple in the, you know, in the garden of Eden and the snake being mm. like, don't you want a little bite of this? No. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, let's think though. Is it the Satan? To in your analogy, is it the Satan to He Who Remains God? Which we've always kind mm. of assumed that uh, Miss Minutes is working with Kang because mm-hmm. I think it seems that way for sure. Uh, but I wonder in that moment, it almost seems like she's trying to stop them. So yeah. it's like she's trying to stop them from reaching him, but he wants them to reach him. So right. what is Miss Minutes' role? I think it's mind games. Well, that's the other thing. It could be mind games or it could be a test to be like, are you the version of Loki that can pass this up? I so like that. that. Maybe, I like that a lot. Yeah, I like it too. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, okay. Up next, we have Trent Pummel, another one of our patrons, says, uh, at the time marker 3621 in this episode, during the phone call in the hallway scene, you can very faintly make out a figure walking toward Loki from behind him. On the reaction podcast, Jeff said that Loki will have to prune himself, and it sure looks like the blurry figure figure has black hair and possibly some Loki horns. Ooh, Loki Mm. horns. Um, I think we need a scene-by-scene breakdown from Matt uh, with a classic enhance. (laughs) (laughs) Um, If that is not Loki creeping up behind Loki, uh, Loki Loki-ception, then who could it be? Maybe Renslayer. uh, Couldn't really tell the skin tone from the two seconds of screen time. I don't think it's her. Well, it just depends on what the goal of the person... Like, clearly, whoever pruned him... Knew what was going on and that that had to get done, right? Well, kind of. Here's the problem. Here's the we're back to like how does time work in the TVA? Because he they were like, you need to be pruned at the exact moment when I'm going to extract you from the time stream. But if he's pruned way in the past, like 400 years ago, which it seems like is what happened, then like, is he entering the time stream? Since time doesn't work that way and there is no past at the TVA, is all of that happening simultaneously? It just feels like they're going another... Isn't a black hole where two parts in time meet at the same 
pine. As a wormhole, or I think is wormhole. what you're thinking. Hmm. Uh, so maybe, maybe there's a, some sort of connection between, and we that's what we talked about on our reaction episode a little bit. Why is it these two moments? What is the key connection between these two moments that makes Loki jump? Because he wasn't just jumping randomly around time. He was jumping between two contiguous right. points in time. And bang, Sylvie is there and says, I found you. I found you. Did, but is she saying that to Loki or uh, this other figure behind Loki? Yeah. She seemed happy, though. It was kind of like, I found you, instead of like, found you, mother, you know? <clears throat> well, and she said, uh, was it in, in in season one or was it this where she says, I was pruned before you were born? Yeah, a long time before you were born, I think she said. So, like, what is When she that? can't go into the door. I love that scene. He's like, are you going to go? She's like, can you just give me a minute to get my head straight? <laughs> So what if we're seeing like a long time ago in the TVA and it's like Sylvie has just been pruned and she's just sort of figuring out. So last season we had this experienced version of Sylvie helping Loki navigate this whole world and the TVA and everything. What if we end up getting a Loki that gets to go back and help her Hmm. navigate the TVA for the first time? If she didn't have bangs, I would think that that might be a little bit more possible. I have to watch it again to see if she, if there were bangs or sans bang. Because I'm telling you, you can tell a lot from this stuff by people's hair. We've always yeah, yeah. We, paid attention to that. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's like your 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 first interaction with the podcast was giving us like cool uh, hair <laughs> thoughts about. I was like, Natasha's hair is about six months grown out, so we're at least a <laughs> yeah. couple years after. <laughs> yeah, so this is where it fits in the timeline because of hair. Um, yeah, because if they were going to have it be, I don't know, I guess she could have had bangs back then, but I don't think it would have been smart to do that because it would be confusing since New Sylvie, I, did she have bangs in the very first episode? Or I she had know. her crown? I, don't, I, I honestly have no idea when she, when she did and didn't have bangs. I can't remember. But I know, I'm pretty this sure she had bangs coming through the elevator. Her hair is definitely different in the uh, elevator than we've seen it before. Um, but yeah, I feel like we need to like rewatch really closely that entire, uh, sequence. It's just rings on. Like I'm, I'm actually, I have it pulled up right now. I'm, I'm doing the enhanced thing. We're not, this is not a video episode. I don't see anybody wake, walking up behind him before he's pruned. Okay. But I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking and I'm watching it in incredible slow-mo to try to get a sense of what's going on here. Man, he looks very pained as he's being pruned. See, and I was like, I was confused by that, because I'm like, isn't that what you wanted to do? <laughs> I think maybe it's because he saw Sylvie. That's the real, like, character stuff of this first episode. Oh, she's got bangs in that. She has bangs. In which? Uh, pulling the elevator apart. And she's smiling. She definitely has it there. I'm, I'm asking, like, wh- when else has she had bangs? Like, when does that, what does the bangs mean, is the question. <laughs> But, well, it looks like since she's in the 80s, maybe she cut her bangs to work at McDonald's because bangs are such were a big thing in, in 1980 or whatever. Oh, man. He's right. You see it? Trenton is definitely right. Like, it's not the shot when he gets pruned. It's like a good bit before that shot. I'm si- wait, he, he, wait, he gave us a time code. I'm, I'm sitting here trying to lock oh, narrow 36, it down. Oh, 3621. Yeah, he gave us a time code. I don't know what I'm... Okay, so I'm... when Sylvie first gets to the um, McDonald's, there are no bangs. So when we see her at the end, no bangs. Right. But in... But in the elevator, she had bangs. Okay. And then in all cool. the other things that we see later. So she has bangs. So it looks like she cut her bangs after... The whole he will, oh, who like will in the trailers, there. she's had bangs. You're saying, yeah, because that's future stuff that we're going to see, and we've seen her with bangs in the McDonald's. But when she okay. got there at the end of that season, or at the end of the first episode, no bangs, but elevator bangs. So, so they're going to, I don't know, time yeah. travel, or or it could be something from another time completely. If, if yeah, also, do you see horns? I'm trying to figure it out. Oh man, and he's wearing like a. It looks like he's wearing like a green jacket type situation or something. I don't know. Cool. It would kind of make sense that he would be the one that found out and they have to go back. I wonder if the last episode of this is going to mirror the first episode or something. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, or even halfway through or something. There, mm-hmm. We are definitely going to revisit all these moments from a different perspective, I feel like. Because um, I also it, think that other stuff is going to be happening around Sylvie because we've seen the uh, the record falling apart, which I think the record is a really good analogy of time as well. Like if you look at a record... It's in a circle. 
each track is something new. And when it slowly starts to unravel, you're like unraveling it piece by piece. Yeah. I do think it looks like this figure has black hair, possibly horns, but it's so faint and blurry. I also think that it could be Mobius. Like just seeing the way that the figure seems to be standing, mm. I could kind of see it being Mobius. And maybe that black hair is just the space around his head and the shadows. Interesting. Um, I, unfortunately, I will try to get a good picture of this and send it out on the screen of Panda chat or something, but um, <laughs> I'll maybe put a link to that post in our, uh, in our feed here. And if you haven't, join our Stranded Panda chat on Facebook. Jump in. Uh, unfortunately, Disney does has it so that you can't screenshot anymore. Oh, those jerks. Yeah. You have to watch it on your phone. Oh, yeah. Can, I guess you can screenshot on your phone, maybe? Yeah, okay. I would think so. Cool. Yeah, I'll see about that. Okay, uh, love it. I love it. That's a really great catch, uh, Trenton. I did not know about the person behind, but I, I could see it being Loki or Mobius, to, in my opinion. But yeah. I, I don't know. I'm guessing Loki because it just would be cooler. Yeah, <laughs> like if it's, it's cooler Loki, if it's, it's cool. Him. Yeah. All right, up next, Andre Sparks, one of our patrons, says, Hey, Panda Crew, uh, Loki Season 2 desires and Loki predictions follow. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, we he, he sent this in. Um, before the season started, and it, we just didn't get to it. Uh, it's uh, somehow missed it. I think we'd already recorded the Desires episode before it came through. 2.03 a.m. Andre, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, man. No judgment. <laughs> you do you, Andre. You live the, you live the, the time stream you want to live. Back to Andre. Loki season two, Desires and Loki predictions follow. I want to learn how Renslayer is connected to Kang and how she became a part of the TVA. I also want to see a jet ski chase to replace a car chase. Um, I want to see a post credit scene that connects this to Deadpool 3. Uh, lastly, here is my final prediction for the Loki character. I predict Loki will be the leader of of the secret wars and he will be the Tony of the culmination movie. He will sacrifice himself and a new MCU will be born. Hope we all have a good time during this series. Keep up the good work, Andre. Andre. Thank you, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Um, those are some great predictions and some great like thoughts. I don't know how many of them will come true, but like there's some really good yeah. ones in there. Well, the first one that was my desire. So like I want to see the Renslayer and yeah. Kang relationship. Mm -hmm. So, and I honestly because of that little second that we got from the first episode, we definitely are them yeah. talking. He's like, "Oh, I like what you're doing, girl." She's like, "Oh, thanks." <laughs> We're going to get some deeper connection to Renslayer for sure. Mm -hmm. Um and I love the we all want something with a good jet ski, but jet ski car chase, like like a jet ski Action sequence sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I don't know if I want him to like really enjoy it or like hate it. Like, I kind of like the idea of him getting on the jet ski and then like being in the middle of it and being like, Why do people ride these things? This is terrifying. Yeah, or, they're not the know. best, man. They really aren't. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, my uh, girlfriend's family has a has a jet ski thing at their, that they ride out at the lake or whatever. And like just this morning I was, I was uh, on the phone. They, they needed someone to come pick it up because they don't have a car with a trailer hitch. And I was like, I do, I can come do that. Mm -hmm. And so like, it was kind of funny that I was this morning talking about going and helping out a family with jet a jet ski. I <laughs> like driving a jet ski, but being a passenger on the jet ski is like absolutely the worst. Oh yeah. I've never liked being a, but yeah. And especially like, you know, as females, we have to shave our legs and then put lotion on because you're going to be out in the sun. I've slidden off. Like, I've had bruises from trying to hold on to that that stuff because it's different when you get to hold on to the front and you're, like, in control. But when you're, like, I, you have to hold on to somebody in front of you's waist, they take a turn. Why do you think so many people get dumped? It's so hard. That's why, that's why you should just never off. shave your legs. I know. Then you get that, like, scene from Spider-Man where those little things come out of his fingertips and stick to the nice. wall. Yeah, I would do that. You know? If society would let me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let women have spider-man legs come yeah, on people leave us alone <laughs> <laughs> i want to find the man who did that to us i'm that like if i could go back in time mm. <laughs> <laughs> and another roadie strangling thanos <laughs> she's gonna kill so many people in their cribs people Dude. she's a real oh, dark character it. over here we were talking about that movie chronicle the other day and i was like that's me that's exactly what would happen to me. Chronicle with Michael B. Jordan and what's his face? It was like kids get random powers from an asteroid. And then the one guy just Dane 
Whitman just immediately, no, wait, I think Dane Whitman's a superhero. Dane something is his name. They just mm. immediately are like, the one is bad. You never saw Chronicle? I did. I did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. I'd be up there like, unlimited power, come and stop me, cops. <laughs> and then they'd yeah. stop me. <laughs> yeah. You'd get stopped. I'm sorry. Pretty quickly. Yeah, pretty quickly. I would go live on the moon. <laughs> the other two things that uh, uh, Andre says here that I find really fascinating is the idea of Deadpool 3 connection. That would be absolutely amazing. Like a post credits with a Deadpool 3 connection. Because Deadpool 3 is one of the next things. We keep talking about how they should do that, even if it's unrelated. Mm -hmm. And Deadpool being able to hop in and out of the time stream at the end of Deadpool 2 just totally makes sense that he could like pop into this. And it would be a great laugh line. It would mm -hmm. be a real connection to the MCU. And it would connect to the next thing, and like I would absolutely love it. You know, that's something that I noticed when we were listening, or when we were watching it. I heard Loki's theme was they they played the the theme from um, I think uh, Multiverse of Madness in there once or twice, and I'll have to go back and look at it again. But huh. that like bomb, 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 bomb. No, it's that's very the, that's much the Loki thing. It's Loki, but it's also they play that when Wanda kind of like takes over that. Um, citadel thing for herself i wonder if it's going to be the multiverse theme i hope so that's like i'm that, like hoping that, that somehow that stuff really tied cool in. especially for us fans because i think that as the loki theme has worked really well it's got this like because loki's is bam, thing. Bam, dee -doo -doo -doo, dee -doo -doo -doo, bam bam dee -doo -doo -doo. like if you listen to the the intro Mm, but that yeah. that specific thing i was like i've heard bum, that bum, 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 bum. you know that was danny elfman he did that I'd have to listen to them both again. Yeah, I, th I feel like I've heard that a lot in Loki, but I like I feel like it's at the end, maybe like at the po in the credits of Loki mm -hmm. that's in there. But I, I'm again, I'm so bad at listening to those things and remembering. Which is what's what. I was like, you're a musician. You should be into that I know. shit. <laughs> I'm a musician, but I'm not that kind of musician. And yeah. like I, yeah, it's funny because all of my friends, like especially ge in the geeky culture, like it's a big thing to love the scores of these different movies. Yeah. And I, don't even recognize them half the, the time. The like, scene they just go I'm specifically thinking of isn't when she takes over the thing. It's when she, um, when they're in uh, Carmitage and she had just crawled out, crawled out of the mirrors, and mm. like Doctor Strange is trying to talk to her, like talk her down, and she's just like, you know what, shut up, and just like goes up into the air. That's very much. I'll have to listen to both of those again because that's definitely what I was picturing. I was like, God, that sounds just like it. Man, I just remembering that scene out of Multiverse of Madness is one of my favorites, which was when they used the uh, music notes. Like, oh, from, I love uh, the end. To, to, yeah, it's so good. To fight. Oh, it's good. Oh, oh. The other thing, uh, last thing Andre said here is uh, predicting that Loki will be the leader in Secret Wars and he'll be like the Tony of this culmination movie. I think there's a shot at that just because I do think there's something to be said for the way that we were all so excited for Secret Wars and we are all so excited for Loki because those are the like those are the OGs. And I do think that like having at least some of those OG characters in Secret Wars, which like I think Nick Fury, Loki, um, Banner, uh, you know, and at that point I feel like Doctor Strange and Ant Man will feel like old school characters. Mm -hmm. Um I'm hoping that uh Captain Marvel can feel that way too. Captain Marvel I, I I like her as a character, but if it feels like she's been so sparsely included and sort of haphazardly included in the things that she's been in. Like she hasn't been a main character of a, an Avengers movie. She's sort of this thing that breezes in and out. Yeah. It's their, oh, we need to get out of this. <laughs> right. Well, she's so freaking powerful that it's hard to like write her in against, uh, you know, almost anybody, but right. maybe, maybe her, I don't really care for her powers to be nerfed. It's just like a, from a story perspective or the villains that we're facing have to get so much more powerful before she's a, it's like that power scaling thing of like, she's so powerful that if the villains were powerful enough, then like Captain America and Iron Man don't have a chance. So it's like, right. it's like this weird. So the fact that she just came in and did that one thing made sense, but it also made her feel like a device rather than a character in those movies. Right. That's why the Marvels, I'm pretty interested. I'm like, wow, at the end, we see all three of them fighting this one chick. And I'm like, well, how powerful mm -hmm. is she supposed to be? Right. Tom Hiddleston's yeah. wife, by the way, by Baby Mama, is the is the oh. villain. I think we talked about that before. I think and we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's neat. I do really like Captain Marvel 
I think it's in the beginning of Endgame mm-hmm. when she's just like, "No, I'm going to kill Thanos." Like yeah, that's what let's I do. Go. Like <laughs> yeah, it's time to do that thing. Like she's just we're more of a team around here, and she's like, "I'm not though." Like I like her bravado in that scene a lot. Um, the sort of like experience thirty mm-hmm. years on Captain Marvel is really cool. And then she wasn't very helpful at the end of Shang Chi and that scene she's just like no idea gotta go i'm like (laughs) thanks thanks for stopping by she's got more important (laughs) shit to do um i get it (laughs) we are going to take a quick ad break and we will be right back with lots more uh feedback and talk about this first episode of loki right after this and we're back on the mcu cast and we're back (laughs) jeff's not here so i'm over back (laughs) (laughs) Uh, let's just right, dive right into this feedback. And up next, we have Chantel Brister says, Hi, Jam or Maj. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's J A M for. I, I like Jam because it's a word. I like Jam. You know? Jam's cool. I like but jam. I like what she ends up going Jeff with. Jeff Ashley. Oh, actually, I'm going with Ashley and her guardians. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of like the Peter Quill of our group. <laughs> yeah. 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 For sure. Um, <laughs> Come on, you're definitely the rocket. Like just I'm like totally not, the rocket. not I know. even. I'm in a, charge now. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. You're you're now the leader <laughs> of the guardians. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, she says. Uh, if this has already been answered, sorry, but what do you think isolates Loki as the only person so far that moves through time the way he does? If I'm thinking correctly without overthinking, when Loki is time-slipping, he is moving through his own current branch. The rules before were, going into the past does not impact your future. You essentially become a variant. But, instead, he's time-slipping and going to the past to directly help his future. Like when... He is working through the problem with the past OB, and suddenly current OB remembers these helpful facts. Hmm. Hmm. I was thinking maybe because a Loki variant killed He Who Remains, but that doesn't seem like enough to give him this, dare I call it, power. It's also separate from America Chavez because she's the only one version of herself that exists. So she's not impacting anything. Um, I love how they are complicating time so far this season. Thanks for letting me nerd out with you guys. (laughs) Chantel. I, yeah, I do too, Chantel. Like, I don't even know where they're going with it. Like, I think you... Your version that you're talking about where he's interacting with his own branch is is a, is, a, is a fine one. The problem is, up until now, this kind of time didn't even exist in the TVA. So there's no branches in the TVA. When you become a variant, you're either destroyed or you're kind of thrown in this pool that is like a toy box of TVA agents that don't seem to exist on the timeline. They can enter the timeline at any point. So he's not, ex- he's not actually on a branch, at least the way the TVA used to work, but something has happened. And now the TVA is working differently. Um, I really, I keep meaning to go back and watch that last scene from episode, the last episode of season one, because there's a moment where like, it's, we now know it's in the past and they're watching the, the branches happen. And it seems like the, the TVA had something else happen. Okay. Here's a thought. Mm-hmm. Maybe the reason these two moments are connected, because we saw him run up to Mobius to try to talk and we see all the branches forking off and Mobius and her are talking about how like, the branches are off the charts. They're going crazy. Right. Maybe that verse that and sorry. And we saw the Kang statue. Maybe that is the moment the TVA was changed or the last time this happened. So like, let's say the TVA exists on the same kind of temporal spectrum that he who remains and the citadel exists on right okay and so it's sitting outside of time but it does have this connection to the citadel and they are going along a similar like because he's controlling the tva as an instrument to control the timeline right so maybe this was the last time maybe the, the moments he's bouncing between are the last time a 
he who remains version of Kang was killed and all of the timelines oh. got got completely you know absurd and someone closed them down into one so we're going to see the ri- maybe we're about to see the rise of the next he who remains or alternatively we see the rise of the last he who remains through the eyes of the the past Sylvie and Loki you know like the yeah. one that we see in the past so Loki maybe in the so now now that he's been pruned and brought into the time stream, he's going to have these clues of what happened in the past, in this previous time, right? This previous time he was connected to. So what if they realize, like, no, no, they from context clues, him seeing Sylvie in the elevator. Well, of course he's going to want to go back. So because he, he just saw Sylvie, so he's going to yeah. go like, I know where Sylvie is. I have to figure out not how to time slip, but how to go back to the moment I was time slipping. So then right. he goes back to that. To prune himself. <laughs> the, yeah, exactly. To prune himself. But also we get to watch the rise of he who remains through their eyes sometime in the past. And then this version that we're seeing now, maybe that informs a way of stopping a he who remains from rising again. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. What will be interesting is seeing why he had why he chose to hide that he was in control of everything. Like why he decided yeah. to be like, oh no, actually there's these three timekeepers. Like what happened with this? Okay, so maybe they, they didn't like me being the ruler, so I have to be a shadow ruler exactly. and kind of hide behind everything. I'd like to see how that happened too. Well, it's very possible that whatever happened I mean, this thing we so so if we see the version of He Who Remains we saw in the Citadel, we see his rise and takeover yeah. of the TVA, and we see his like logic, and he's like, no, the reason the last TVA fell was because he had too much hubris, and he took he, t- he had this statue of himself. The TVA can't ha- the TVA agents cannot believe themselves to be under control of this of a megalomaniacal maniac. They have to believe they're under the control of a benevolent force. Like yes. the timekeepers, and he creates the timekeepers. Like we could see all of that in this past, mm-hmm. if that, if if what I'm thinking is right. And it's interesting in season one of Loki having like um, Ravana talk about, you know, Rubius is like, "How's it going in there?" And she's like, "How do you think? They're furious. They're this. They're that." But we never actually get to see Mobius. her interact with them. Mobius, oh look, mm-hmm. what you did it. What? Oh, did I do it? No, you made me think Morbius. Oh, <laughs> I'm just gonna go with Owen. So Owen Wilson. Is like, well, there's one of them. I don't know. We never get to see anybody talking to the timekeepers. We never get to see interactions, right? Mm-hmm. That'd be super, I don't know. I just would be really interested to see, like, she was going and reporting and talking with them. What are they saying to her? What are they doing? She was saying they were mad, but we never really got to see it. Yeah. It would be really interesting if we see him set up the TVA the way it's supposed to be, the way he does. And we see how he conquers the TVA. We see how he resets people's memories. So they've already set themselves free, right? They set themselves free of he who remains in mm-hmm. this version of the timeline. But now they need to figure out how to set the TVA free of things like uh, the the, the re- rewriting of their memories. What if they like their goal now is to prevent the TVA from falling under control of whoever this new conqueror is whoever the right. new kang variant is that's coming in to to do what the old kang variant did and if they stop that and they stop a he who remains like figure from rising then like all out chaos like they basically double chaos. down on the multiverse and they double down on their decision to like let the multiverse thrive and maybe sylvie has to convince loki by the end of the season that it's, that it's the right thing to do yeah hmm, hmm. i like that like that i I think she won't have too hard of a high like time convincing him no (laughs) yeah i think i mean it was pretty uh yeah pretty just iffy there at the end them like they had their swords to each other's throats then well she had hit i mean she did he wasn't gonna do anything he was playing defense for the first time in his life (laughs) yeah he was yeah he was so to answer chantel's question i guess i guess my only thought about the time slipping is i i don't know your your version of your your explanation makes as much sense as any i think at this point we don't have a good explanation for why the time streams but i really like this thing idea we just popped into our heads about like the idea that that's why these two times are connected because that's been my like why these two times why are these two moments and the the one clue we have is both of these moments 
are moments where the multiverse is splitting. Because this is what we were talking about last season. We were talking about how, like, we see the multiverse in reality at the Citadel starting to split off. And then it cuts to the TVA and we see it too. So we assumed those were the same time. But what if they're not? And that right. one was the previous. And now we know they're not. So right. maybe that's why the connection exists. Like him being pruned at the Citadel and being sent back to he was sent back to the wrong reboot basically right and now we're gonna see that happen now do we think that that's even gonna happen past this first episode because they kind of made it sound like whatever they were doing was gonna stop that problem no they didn't say it was gonna stop the problem they said it was gonna protect the tva from the problem so okay. he said um he said we need to close the blast doors to protect the tva from the time stream or we'll all be destroyed but like uh it doesn't fix he said he the TVA, something like they can't handle the calculations of the loom creating so many uh, time streams or whatever. Um, but if he uh, closes the blast doors, he can solve. He thinks he can maybe be able to figure out how to solve that problem. But yeah, it, right now we have no idea what what that. Right now, it's it's the TVA is trying to contend with the idea that the multiverse exists. Now, cool. I don't know, man. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> So wibbly wimey, timey wimey. I know I'm the worst person to have for time stuff because I just I can't wrap my mind around it. So I'm just like, sure, whatever it does, <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm not trying to think about it too much because then it hurts my brain. Don't worry, man. I will overthink it for the both. Yeah, of us. that's that's yeah, that's why it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just from the outside just make fun of how insane this is all getting. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> but I, I'm really glad to hear that, like, Chantel is right there with me. Like, she's like, I love how complicated this is getting. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> okay, up next, Kimmy says, hey, Matt, Jeff, and Ashley. Kimmy underscore Pike here. I guess that may be her uh, Twitch name, possibly. Hmm. Um, I've been listening for a bit now, and this is my first time writing in. Hey, thanks, Kimmy, for writing in for the first time. First time, long time. Woo! Yeah. Um, I am really pumped for what is to come in Loki Season 2. I have no fears or worries about it dipping in quality after the ending of Episode 1. My mind has been going down a bunch of rabbit holes trying to guess who was on the phone and who pruned Loki. And honestly, every option on the table is interesting, fun, and great storytelling. Yeah, I, I agree with that. That's a really good yeah. point. Like, whoever it is is going to be cool and interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't doubt it at all. Like, I'm totally on board. Um, is the person who pruned Loki the same as the person who's on the phone? Is the phone ringing a coincidence or part of the plan? Was it Mobius, Loki, Kid Loki, Sylvie, Ravana, B-15, Kang. All of these possibilities are exciting, and I don't see myself being disappointed whenever the reveal happens. My favorite theory, although not necessarily the one I think is most likely, is that it was OB. I am really stuck on him quantifying the amount of time since he last saw Mobius. I think OB experiences time unlike any other TVA agent. OB seems to have never had his memory wiped. He remembered everything with Mobius very clearly. He almost seems to have a photographic memory. So I think it is a possibility that instead of watching Mobius have his skin melted off, he engaged in some time nonsense to prune Loki and save them. I like uh, that. I like that too. <clears throat> That's really fun. Um, I am very excited to learn more about OB and why he is so different than other TVA agents. I am also here for all the X-Men theories, regardless of how far-fetched. <laughs> Buckle up, baby. Yeah, that's my favorite red string theory. <laughs> I was like, I saw the week. X on the door! <laughs> I know, there's the, the, the X on the door, the X5 being an mm -hmm. asshole that seems kind of cyclopsy. Oh, yeah. Um, she continues, thanks for all you guys do to create a fun online space for us Marvel nerds. Um, yeah, I, this is this great feedback. I agree with Kimmy a hundred percent that like, no matter what happens, I'm so excited and on board. Like I, there's not yeah. a thing in me that's like, this needs to happen, mm -mm. which is great. It, it feels like tons of possibilities are open because the show is so weird and cool yeah. and it'll all be interesting. I'm really pumped. Yeah. Um, and I love the OB stuff. Like OB is weird. Yeah. That's it's like did they just forget about him because he was down in that place? Did he maybe set up a way that the the stuff doesn't 
get into where he is so he doesn't get the time, like the mind wipers he just like forgotten about, which is the perfect reason for him to just continue to know everything he knows and never get like brain wiped. I don't know. Maybe Kang doesn't know about him. I'm kind of hoping that he's like also a higher power, like something a lot more powerful Mm. than anybody else in there, like the Watcher or somebody like that, who's just there to kind of make sure interesting things don't go so crazy. I really like that idea. I also like the idea I just had, which is the idea that like, what if he is a tech genius? I know we have a lot of them. But what if he's one of the tech geniuses from the MC, from the Marvel six one six universe that we've been wanting to bring in? Um, I was just trying to think of who would make sense. Like, um, what if he's a tech genius and like he is someone that Kang brought in as a variant to be like, oh no, we can use him. But maybe maybe he's maybe he is really powerful on the timeline, and so Kang kind of sequestered him on his own, but he, he mm. can't, he can't keep wiping his memory. Like he wipes everyone else's memories because he needs that guy to be good at the tech. So he can't keep starting him over. He needs him to right. stay good at the tech and get better and better. He's writing these manuals and stuff. Um, and I was just trying to think of like who, what, what comic book character, like, yeah, y'all let us know. Like, I think that's a really good question. Like who is he a variant Forge, of? If we're going X-Men. <laughs> Ooh, Forge. Okay. Okay. Um, Someone we've and and this is definitely a connection partially because he's Asian, uh, and I feel like his look kind of works for the character. But what about uh, Amadeus Cho? Do you know? Do you know? Is he a tech guy? Like I, I know Banner is, and he's a Hulk character, so I didn't know if like mm. Amadeus and his know. mother, his mother in in comics and in the MCU was a was a big. There's a lot of been talked for years about bringing in Amadeus Cho as the character as a character. That'd um, be cool. And. I don't know if he's a tech guy though. I know his mother is, and I know obviously a different Hulk is. Um, so I was curious about that. I don't know. Him having a single name like Cher, you know, or Madonna, he's, yeah. it's a, it's a celestial God in a sort of way. Well, and that's why I really like, I thought last week I asked like, what Marvel character does OB like the letters OB is that, is that maybe cause he's Ouroboros, but what if it's something else in 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 the in the timeline that Ob works for, I can't think of anything though. Obadiah, <laughs> he's a he's a variant of Obadiah. <laughs> yeah, he's in a variant of Obadiah Stane. <laughs> Be the silliest thing, um, but no, I I do think that like the idea that just like bringing in Jonathan Majors as an acclaimed actor for season one, and like we ex- the expectation being that he would be in a lot more. Like uh, Ki Hu Kwan just was was like. Uh, critically acclaimed for his performance and like is kind of hitting the scene in a big way and returning to form. And he's beloved by kind of geeky people because of his like Goonies connection and his early like Indiana Jones connections and stuff. Yeah. Temple of doom, temporal loom. I saw that too. <laughs> it's all in there. It's all in there. Um, <laughs> but uh, all of that can, and, and like him being the tech guy in the Goonies too. Maybe that's who it is. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's the, it's like they finally uh, get Goonies too off the ground and this is how they do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he returns to his, his original Goonies timeline. <laughs> what is that character's name? In the, I don't in the, like the Goonies. Data? Data. That's what it is. I didn't have the same affection for it growing up that other people did. Like people love that movie. I know, but I didn't watch it till I was like in high school. It just didn't have the same. Even as a kid, I hated kids. I, I see that. I see that. <laughs> uh, well, we got one more. Let's let's hit this last one. Uh, Todd Fitzhugh says, "Well, Loki season two episode one was a bit of. I think it's a very British way of saying this. Was a bit of all right, wasn't it?" <laughs> Okay. All right. I'm just going to leave that in that way. That's fun. Uh, Well, Loki season two, episode one was a bit of all right, wasn't it? Uh, I guess that is a British way of saying that. So lovely to see all those characters again. Tom Hiddleston's dramatic acting was superb, and I really like Owen Wilson's one-liners. I feel like I have to start off with, OMG, did the woman in the yellow van die? Loki said she'd be fine, but that didn't look fine. No, she's (laughs) totally dead. (laughs) <laughs> he can add another one of the people he's killed to his little not like I killed so many people board. Yeah. You even hear it smash. And I was Oof. like totally here for it. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> 
My main couple takeaways uh, from the show were, was the Kang the Conqueror's voice on the tape with Renslayer as opposed to He Who Remains? Was that Kang the Conqueror's voice as opposed to as opposed to He Remains? Weren't we led to believe she didn't know who was in charge? Well, they yeah, erased her memory. But they made that they, very clear. Exactly, but they ar- they definitely erased memories. We know that yeah. now. Like we 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 speculated about it in season one, but now we know it. But I hope it's to save her because she's gonna like because he loves her. Yeah, I do. I mean I the do. romance, something like that. And I, I also wonder if like there's a possibility that he who remains really was like kind of a softer Kang, but had like a love for Rinslayer. And like, what if there is a Kang the Conqueror out there? Actually, now I'm really. What if they're all in love with her? (laughs) Yeah, and that would be that would be interesting too. Um, But what if there's so we 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 know that the conqueror was thrown in like time jail in the quantum realm, right? Mm -hmm. So what if we see what if this takeover we're seeing in the past is the TVA? (laughs) Sorry, this is all getting very the the theory we've been talking about this episode where. what if the past of the TVA is is at that transition moment when Kang the Conqueror goes down and he who remains replaces him? Right. Oh, yeah. Then that that maybe the he who remains we see at the end of time there is a and we also saw that that he who remains had those statues of multiple Kangs inside the Citadel. Mm-hmm. So what if that version is when Kang was pr- imprisoned? Like Kang had conquered the timeline and was, you know. Uh, lording over all the other Kangs, and then uh, we see the Kangs. Maybe the maybe we see the Kang Dynasty at work coming in to take down that Kang, you know, mm, um, and I then like it. throw it, throwing him in prison. And that's the version of, that we see in the big statue is also the one that gets thrown into prison. Mm, um, I'm, mm. I'm here for that. I like yeah, it. it. Sounds cool. Um, okay. Also, was Obi's memory coming back to him because it was just being jogged by what Mobius was saying, or were those memories being implanted in real time when Loki was having a chat with him from the past, if that makes sense? Um, Yes, it's the latter. According to Obi, it absolutely makes sense. There's no flaw in that logic. Uh, And yes, I I believe it was being implanted as it was happening. That's, That's how they seem to be saying it. They just did that. Remember that horror movie I told you to watch over this weekend? Totally killer. Yes, but it's don't a spoil slasher. It. I'm not spoiling it, but okay. it's a slasher that has to do with time travel. And Ooh. they literally did the same exact thing where oh, one person yeah. in the past is talking about stuff and then you see the person in the future and they're like, well, wait a minute. I specifically remember her being killed in the garage, but she was killed in the bedroom. Let's see. Uh, last thing that Todd says here, overall thought it was a solid return and I can't wait to see where the show takes us next week. Uh, there's still lots of mystery to explain, like where is Sylvie, where is Ravana, and where were all those Minutemen off to? Listening all time, always, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Todd. Maybe they're all being sent to 1980-whatever Oklahoma to go get Sylvie. But I think yeah. she's hidden, honestly. I think now that she's... She who remains kind of, she can hide in the timeline wherever she wants and it doesn't have to be at apocalypses anymore. That's why she's like, I am so chill with this. Well, now there's so much change in the timeline happening, like with all the different timelines expanding, it seems like there's too much going on for the TVA to even track her as long as she doesn't make big waves. You know, if she stays right. low key. So that's probably why she doesn't that go she stays around what? doing anything. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do it that time. I couldn't let it go. <laughs> no, for sure, for sure. Uh okay guys. Well, that's that's the feedback. Um and uh yeah, I I don't I don't know where the minute are off to. That's a good question. I think I think it has something to do with that lady who said, "Wait, that means we can do anything." Mm. And I, and I think they are doing something that's unrelated to the, like they finally feel free of the timekeepers, but that doesn't mean that all the TVA is going to be good guys. And I think they're going to do something dark that like that Loki and Mobius will have to stop or Loki's Mm. Mobius and Sylvie will have to stop in some way. Give Um, me the darkness. Let's do it. Yeah. 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 I feel like it's probably going to be sort of unrelated to the overall arc of he remains and all that stuff. So like if they're going to do something, 
what do the variants want? We know some of them want things like uh, Mobius wants a jet ski, but like, what does that variant want? And when she says, I can do anything I want, like, what is, what do they want? And what, what kind of changes do they want on their timeline? What kind of, how will they use the power of the TVA if it's in their hands and they can do whatever they want? And and mm. will it be selfish? Yeah. It's, it seems like maybe there's just some selfish actions taking, taking over there, which I, <laughs> but maybe that's me connecting it to like the idea of the like sort of religious trauma. And when you go through that sort of like lack of belief, like figuring out your own path and figuring out what you, what you prioritize and stuff. Like I, I, I think this show is going for something with that concept because it feels very, uh, which is a concept that is very personal to me. Uh, yeah. And so I'm I'm pumped to see how they handle it and like what, uh, yeah, like what, what the different versions of how different people respond to losing their faith, basically. Yeah. Um, I think that's really really cool. Okay. Like well, that's the feedback, man. Thanks for uh, being awesome. on the cast with me today, Ms. Yeah. Ashley. As always, forever, all time. <laughs> and again, uh, please go uh, join up on the. Uh, uh, Patreon, if you like our show, if you find it, uh, imp- if you find it a good part of your week, it would be great if you'd support it. Um, we we try to put out a lot of shows, and uh, we really uh, appreciate you guys so much. And so um, much. we will be back sometime Thursday night. Thursday night. That's right. Yeah. Thursday well, night. I was like, uh, pretty pretty sure ten o'clock yeah, we, Eastern. We have a time. Yeah, <laughs> ten o'clock Eastern, nine o'clock Come Central. Come see us on Twitch. We'll be on Twitch. Join the conversation. First thing, f- as soon as we can get it out, we'll have the podcast out on YouTube and the podcast version because we're, we're going to be b- dropping video versions. And in case anybody's looking and looking, I'm going to post this episode as well as all of our other feedback episodes on YouTube as just an audio version, like with with just our logo because we're I don't have time to edit everything video, but I think put. Putting them on there as audio will be good. Yeah, so since there's somewhere for you guys some to go find it besides whatever yeah. else. So if you're having trouble, go watch on YouTube. Hey, and while you're at YouTube, comment, comment, talk back and forth. Like it really helps out. Like us get shown to more people on YouTube, and it's weird. We have such a large audience on our podcast, but our YouTube is. We have a lot. A lot of you guys have gone and subscribed, which is a huge help. But like a lot, you know, we most of you guys listen to it on podcast version, and so like the YouTube version doesn't get as much love and the algorithm is kind of weird. So it gets us, we get very few views on YouTube, but like we, we want to do more with YouTube. So yeah. if you're, uh, especially if you're in a time right now where you're not getting the podcast, wherever you're getting this, which means you're not hearing this message. Uh, so this is sort of useless, but I'll post it in the chat too. <laughs> it will be on YouTube. If you're having trouble, if you're having low, slow, slow loading issues, like we've heard about from some people we're we're trying to get it fixed. But we'll, we'll, I'll be putting all the episodes on YouTube, at least for the time being. So yeah, we'll be over there. All right, guys. Uh, much love. We'll be back soon. Peace. Until next time, true believers. Thank you for joining us for the Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast. And a special thanks to all of our subscribers at patreon.com slash MCUcast. You make this show possible. And a huge shout out to both. That's right, there's two of them now. Illuminati tier patrons, Walter Kreisky III and Lieutenant Bongo. Thank you, guys. If you want to find all of our fine Stranded Panda podcasts, go to strandedpanda.com. And for a video version, check out youtube.com slash strandedpanda. And if you want to take part in our live streams, go to twitch.tv slash strandedpandatv. 